Hello, pupils. You're welcome to another wonderful edition of your favorite program, The Classroom in Your Home. A program organized by the Lagos State Government and packaged by the Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board, La Subeb. It is to ensure that you're academically engaged in addition to what you're learning in school. I am Antifumi, your English studies teacher, and I have with me, as usual, your wonderful teachers. Hello children, I am your mathematics teacher, Uncle Agbaje, but you know me as the mathematician. Uncle Popo is here, your general studies teacher. And we also have in the house our active sign language interpreter, Uncle Wale. Together, we, we are, are bringing, bringing the classroom, classroom into your home. home. Please stay tuned. You're welcome to Antifumi's class. In our English studies lesson today, we will be looking at the third part of our idioms and idiomatic expressions. We had the first two parts before now. So we're looking at the concluding part of idioms and idiomatic expressions. Before we go into the learning objective for today's lesson, a correction to our previous homework is in order. You were asked to write the sounds that the following animals make. What are the sounds made by the following animals? The N? Yeah, it's clocks. N clocks, and it is known as clocking. Parrot? The parrot squawk, or it chirps. A dog barks. Hep gibber. Elephant trumpets and the lamb bleeds. Did you get the six? Are you sure? Then you deserve to be celebrated with a chair. Good job you. Well done pupils. Now to the learning objective for today's lesson. Don't forget I said we're going to look at idioms and idiomatic expressions. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to define idioms and you should also be able to say some idioms and their meanings. You should be able to define idioms. We've defined it before now. You should be able to define it again. And you should also be able to say some idioms or idiomatic expressions and their meanings. Now, let's begin. What is an idiom? An idiom, like we said before, is a group of words, whether phrase or sentence, which must be learned as a whole to understand their meanings. I take that again. An idiom is a group of words, whether phrase or sentence, which must be learned as a whole before you can understand their meanings. It is quite impossible to understand the meaning of an idiom from the meaning of each of the words considered separately. If you decide to, okay, if you decide to uh, interpret idioms word for word, then you might get it wrong. That's why I said it is quite impossible to understand the meaning of an idiom from the meaning of each of the words considered separately. Now let's look at idioms and their meanings. The first idiom to be considered is to pour oil on troubled waters. If you have something like, oh, that person poured oil on troubled waters. What does it mean? It means to make peace or settle dispute. It means to make peace or settle dispute. There was a fight and my mommy decided to pour oil on troubled waters. That means my mom made peace. My mom settled the fight amicably. Are you, are you with me? Did you get that? Well done. So to pour oil on troubled waters means to make peace or settle dispute. Another idiom is to lead to the altar. Lead to the altar. What does that mean? It means to marry. 
my uncle led his friends or his fiancée to the altar. It means my uncle married his fiancée. The next one is once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon. It's used for events that occurs very rarely. It doesn't occur all the time. Once in a blue moon is used, it means occurs something that occurs very rarely. A red letter day is another example of idioms. A red letter day. What does it mean? It means an important day that must always be remembered. An important day that must always be remembered. What is that red letter day? That you must... Oh, oh, the day you were made the head prefect of your school. Oh, fantastic. That's an important day that must always be remembered. When you have a phrase like above board, above board, what does it mean? Honest and straightforward. It means honest and straightforward. That boy is above board in all his doings. That means he's honest and straightforward in all his doings. Are we together? Well done. A bookworm. If you are referred to as a bookworm, what does it mean? Oh, you know that. Brilliant to you. It, is, it means one who always reads books. You find him or her reading all the time. We refer to that person as a bookworm. To be in animal spirits. When they say someone is in animal spirits, what does it mean? Yes, that's an idiomatic expression. It means to be very strong and healthy. To be very strong and healthy. It's to be in animal spirits. Another example of an idiomatic expression is to put one's shoulders to the wheel. To put one's shoulders to the wheel. It means to work very hard in order to succeed. It means to work very hard in order to succeed. To come, speak and span. To come, speak and span. What does it mean? That needs to be very smart and clean. If they say he came, speak and span. It means he came very smart and clean. As in speak and span. It's very smart, very clean. Are you with me? Well done. Another phrase or another expression is about tongue. If you were to interpret it word for word, it will not make sense. It will not be meaningful because there is no tongue that is good. There is no tongue that is bad. But as an idiomatic expression, when you hear a bad tongue, it means a habit of using offensive language. It is a habit of using an offensive language. If you say, ah, Kolapo has a bad tongue. Kolapo has a bad tongue. That means Kolapo is in the habit of using offensive language. Are, we, are, you, are you with me? Okay. Another expression is a bone of contention. A bone of contention. That means the object of dispute or an object of discourse. The issue we're discussing, the issue we're hammering on. That is the bone of contention. Rough and tumble. Rough and tumble. It means in a very disorderly, in a very disorderly manner. In a very disorderly manner. That is the meaning of the expression rough and tumble. Another one is under one's nose. Under one's nose. It's not possible for anything to stay under your nose. But as an expression, under one's nose means under one's close observation. It's not possible for you to be cheating under my nose. That means you cannot be cheating while you are under my close observation. I am watching you. You cannot cheat under my nose. Did you get that? It means under my close observation. Strike the iron while it is hot. 
to strike the iron while it is hot means what? It means to do the right thing at the right time when it is easy. For you to strike the iron while it is hot means to do the right thing at the right time when it is he, uh, when it is easy. A bird's eye view. A bird's eye view. That is a general view. A general view. A bird's eye view means the same thing as a general view. To pull the wire. To pull the wire. It means to use influence to achieve something. You need something. And you need to know somebody before you could get that thing done. You can say, oh, I need to pull the wire to get this done. That means to use influence to get connected to someone for you to be able to achieve that particular thing. A man of straw, a man of straw is a poor man without financial resources. I would say, oh, that man, he couldn't pay his house rent. He's actually a man of straw. It means the man is a poor man without financial resources. What if we have an expression like to kiss the dust? To kiss the dust. It means to die. Oh, my grandfather just kissed the dust. That means my grandfather just died. To kiss the dust means to die. A wet blanket. A wet blanket. That is someone who discourages others. Oh, I want to do this. Ah, don't do it. It will not, it will not fetch you anything. You will always discourage someone. That is a wet blanket person. A person is a wet blanket. That is, he is one who discourages others. I hope you had fun learning idioms and idiomatic expressions. Yes, I did too. So it is time for me to see how attentive you have been in the course of this lesson. For your classwork, you are to use the following idioms in sentences. You are to make simple but correct sentences with these idioms. To kiss the dust, we just said it. A wet blanket, we just said that one too. And once in a blue moon, you have the next 40 seconds to write three sentences. And your time starts now. Your eyes on me, eyes on me, put your pens down. By now you should have given me three simple but correct sentences using the given idiomatic expressions. Did you? Were you able to write it very well? I know you're smart, brilliant you. So let's look at what I have because it is not possible for us to have the same sentences. So. This is what I have to kiss the dust. The mighty man eventually kissed the dust. My grandfather eventually kissed the dust. Oh, that old woman kissed the dust yesterday. I've given you three sentences now. So it should be close to, it should express the fact that the person died. A wet blanket. She was such a wet blanket at the last party we had. Don't forget you said a wet blanket refers to someone who, do, who is fond of discouraging people. So she was such a wet blanket at the last party we had. If your sentence is able to express the fact that somebody is discouraging someone, then you're right. Lastly, once on a blue moon, 
that is something that does not occur all the time. She visits us. She visits us once in a blue moon. That means she doesn't visit us every day. It is once in a blue moon. It is on rare occasions, not all the time. So we have the three sentences. Did you have something close to that? Then it's time for me to celebrate you with the chair. Well done. I'm proud of you. Now for your homework. You are to write the meaning of the following idioms. Write the meaning of the following idioms. To give the green light. A white elephant. By the skin of the teeth. And red flag. In the next 20 seconds, please capture this assignment and I'll be back to sign out. Well done, children. Please make sure you submit your assignment promptly. I have told you before, I said very soon the names of active participants will be read out. And you're going to win a very unique gift from Lagos Suburb. So make sure when you're submitting your assignment, your name is indicated, as well as your school, your class, and your local government education authority. This is the only way through which you can be identified and adequately rewarded. So on that note, I say, that's it for today. We have come to the end of the English Studies lesson for today. We had fun learning idioms and idiomatic expressions, didn't we? Of course we did. So, it's time for me to hand you over to the mathematician for another beautifully packaged mathematics lesson. But before I go, don't forget, Adifum is always proud of you. Bye. Hello, children. You're welcome to this segment of the program, The Classroom in Your Home. It is mathematics time, and that means it is time to have some fun. I am Uncle Agbaje. Today, as promised in the last lesson, we will continue our work on speed. But before that, let us look at the correction to the previous homework. You were asked to do this. A car traveling at an average speed of 96 kilometers per hour goes for a distance of 1,200 kilometers. How long did it take to complete the journey? Now you want to find the time. You know the speed, and what that speed, 96 kilometers per hour, means is that the car travels for 96 kilometers in one hour. And that information is enough for us to find the time taken to complete a journey of 1,200 kilometers. So let's see how it goes. Now, we know the distance traveled and the time taken that for 96 kilometers, one hour will be used. That is what is meant by 96 kilometers per hour. Now, we want to find how long it will take to complete a journey of 1,200 kilometers. That is, this point is known. We know the distance. We want to find the time. Now, observe that 96 kilometers has increased to 1,200 kilometers. So one hour, the time, will also increase, but in this ratio. And when it's going to increase in this ratio, the bigger number will be on top. That is 1,200 all over 96, the one on top, then multiply by one hour, which is what we want to increase. Now we only need to resolve this. Let us see how it goes. Now let's see. 12 can go in 96. 12 times 8 is 96, so 12 can go 8 times. 12 goes here one time, and you have two zeros. Now, let's see. 8 goes here one time. 8 goes in 10 one time, remaining 2. 8 goes in 20, 2 times, remaining 4 over 8. And that is uh, eventually going to give us 1 over 2, so we have 12 and half hours as you believe yep so am i correct yes i think i am all right so let's see that is 12 and hours which of course you can also write as 12.5 
hours. So we say that the time taken for the car to complete the journey of 1,200 kilometers is 12 and a half hours. Is that what you got, my friend? If you got it right, excellent job, you. I will celebrate you with a chair. <laughs> now you are ready for today's lesson. Now remember in the last lesson I said if you're still having problem with finding the distance, time, speed, no problem. Today is another day to work it out together. Let us see what we have today. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to state the formulas connecting the time, the distance, and the average speed. You should also be able to calculate the distance, the time, and the average speed using their formulas. And finally, you should be able to find the average speed of journeys with different speeds. Now, I'm personally not a fan of cramming formulas. I always prefer the approach of understanding the problem. But there are formulas for finding the distance, the time, and the speed. And I've also helped you to compose a song which will help you to remember these formulas whenever you need to use them. Now, what are the formulas for the average speed, the distance, and the time? These formulas are written right here. To find the average speed, all you need to do is to define, divide the distance by the time. To find the time, you will be given the distance and the average speed. So divide the distance by the average speed. And finally, this one, to find the distance, you will multiply the average speed by the time. I want you to take note of this. Letters D, A, and of course T, D A T. That is that. Okay. So how do we remember this? Because you're bound to get confused. Well, this is the song which I have written out for you. I'm sure you want me to sing now. Are you going to be ready to put them to the head? All righty. Let's go. The song goes thus. What is the formula for average speed? That is the formula for average speed. Speed, distance over time. Time, distance over speed. That is the formula for average speed. Let's go. What is the formula for average speed? That is the formula for average speed. Speed, distance over time. Time, distance over speed. That is the formula for average speed. Now let's see it in the next slide. What is the formula for average speed? That is the formula for average speed. Speed, distance over time. Time, distance over speed. That is the formula for average speed. And when we say that, this is what we mean. Distance, average speed, time. That's on the straight line, D-A-T. So just know so that you have to do distance is equal to average speed times time. Let's take it one more time. What is the formula for average speed? That is the formula for average speed. Speed, distance over time. Time, distance over speed. That is the formula for average speed. Now you are ready to start solving some problems using the formulas. Let's go. The first one says that a train travels a distance of 400 kilometers in two and a half hours. We are to find the average speed. We know that the distance is 400 kilometers. And the time taken is two and a half hours. So we use that line in the song, speed, distance over time. See, speed, distance over time. And now we know that speed is a distance over the time. Then we, we want to find the speed that will be putting the distance on top of the time. And that will be 400 kilometers divided by two and a half hours. Let me quickly resolve this before we move on to the next line. Now 400 divided by two and a half is the same as saying 400 divided by changing this to a mixed number two times two is four plus one five that is divided by five over two but of course it's also the same as saying 400 we change this division to multiplication and we take the reciprocal of the divisor which is five over two that becomes two over five so that is what we are supposed to have on the next line. Let's see. 400 times 2 over 5. Okay, so we have 400 kilometers times 2 over 5. Now we can resolve this. 5 goes in 1, 5 goes in 48. 5 goes in 0, 0 times. So we have 80 times 2. 
and that is 160 kilometers hours. So let's see. Average speed is 160 kilometer over the hour. That is kilometers per hour. 160 kilometers per hour. So the so therefore, the average speed of this train is 160 kilometers per hour. So if you were having a problem with the first way this topic was treated, well, you can use the formula for average speed, but the idea is generally the same. Let's look at another example. This one says, Mr. Bade drove at an average speed of 72.5 kilometers per hour. How far has he traveled? When they say how far, is that distance or time? I think how far is the distance and to find what's the formula for distance speed distance over time time distance over speed that that is DAT distance is average speed times time DAT that is the formula for average speed so we know the we don't know the distance we want to find out but we know the average speed has been given as 72 kilometers per hour we know that the time is 4 hours so we have to multiply 72 kilometers per hour by 4 hours. Now 72.5 rather. 72.5 times 4. Let's quickly do that here. 4 times 5 is 20. There's a decimal point. We group 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Plus 2, that is 10. We group 1. 4 times 7 is 28. Plus 1, that is 29. So we should have 290 kilometers. Let's see. Of course, distance is 290 kilometers, and that means that Mr. Bade drove or he has traveled for 290 kilometers in four hours. Now, here is one for you to do. You have to find the time, how long. If a squirrel ran at an average speed of 30 meters per second, that's the speed. A squirrel ran at an average speed of 30 meters per second. How long did it take to cover? 465 meters you know that squirrel running over your fence and the speed is 30 meters per second now the length of your fence is 465 meters how long will it take the squirrel to go from one end of the fence to the other that is a problem for you to fix my friend you have 40 seconds for this begin All right, then, 40 seconds over. Let's see how it's done. We have to find how long, and that is the time. And using that as song formula, time, distance, over speed, that is the formula for average speed. So time is distance over the speed. What is the distance? The distance is 465 meters. And what is the speed? The speed is 30 meters per second. Okay, so dividing through or resolving this, Let's see what goes. So if we divide, 15 goes here two times, 15 goes here three times, remaining one, 15 goes in 15 one time. And now we have 31 over 2, but 2 cannot go in 31, so we have to change it to a mixed number. 2 in 3, 3 in 31 is 15, remaining one, which we have to divide by 2. Now. We are working with time, so time will be in seconds. The meters can cancel the meters, and you have seconds. So that means that the whole time that the squirrel will take to go from one end of the fence to the other is 15 and a half seconds. That must be a very fast squirrel. All right, so let's see if we are correct. Okay, so this is in decimal. 15 and a half, of course, is still the same as 15.5 seconds. And I believe that that is what you got. Either you wrote 15 and a half seconds or you wrote 15.5 seconds. Both are correct, my friend. Now, let's see. So the squirrel covered 465 meters in 15.5 seconds. Let's see something of a different kind, but still on speed. The distance from Uncle Coco's home 
to his office is 45 kilometers. Now, he spent two hours driving to work. In the afternoon, he spent two and a half hours driving back home. We are to calculate his average speed. Now, what we are going to do here will be to find the average speed, but not by finding the average speed for the morning and finding the average speed for the afternoon and then finding the average of both of them. No. When you have different distances and dif different distances and different times like this, and you have to find the average speed, we have to take the total distance as a distance, then we take the total time as a time, and then we find the average speed like this. Okay, so we know that the average speed is the distance over time. So in this case, it will be total distance all over the total time. Now, the distance from Uncle Popo's home to his office is 45 kilometers, and also from the office back home is another 45 kilometers. Since he went in the morning and came back in the afternoon, that is 45 plus 45. Total distance will be 90 kilometers. And then the time taken. In the morning, he spent two hours, and in the afternoon, he spent two and a half hours. Two hours plus two and a half hours, that will be four and a half hours. So the total time is also four and a half hours. Speed distance over time. That is 90 kilometers divided by four and a half. Let's resolve that here quickly. 90 kilometers divided by four and a half is the same thing as saying 90 kilometers divided by two times four is eight plus one nine. That is nine over two. But of course, that is the same as saying 90 times. Change this division to multiplication and change the divisor, in, change, take the reciprocal, that will be 2 over 9. So that is what we should have in the next line, 90 times 2 over 9, let's see. Of course, it's 90 kilometers times 2 over 9 hours. So, 9 goes here, 1, 9 goes here, 1, here, 0. Now we have 10 times 2, and that is 20 kilometers per hour, and that should be the average speed, yes, of course, the average speed is 20 kilometers per hour. That's 20 kilometers per hour. So remember, when you have different times and different distances, to find the average speed, take the total distance all over the total time using the formula speed distance over time. So what is the summary of all that we have learned today? The formulas that connect the distance and the time and the speed are... Let's sing the song. What is the formula for average speed? That is the formula for average speed, speed distance over time, time distance over speed. That is the formula for average speed. Okay, so now to find the average speed over different distances and different times, divide the total distance traveled by the total time taken. Here is an assignment for you to practice with when you are less busy, my friend. Capture this in 30 seconds and I will be right back. All right, then, I believe that you are done writing your homework. Now, sing that song as you walk with your homework or as you do any problem pertaining to speed, distance, and time. And I assure you, my friend, you will not miss your way. That's the end of the mathematics lesson. Over now to Uncle Popo for the general studies lesson, which promises to be interesting, of course. Till I come your way in the next class, remain wonderful mathematicians. Bye-bye now. Hello, Tutis. You are welcome to General Studies class. I am Uncle Popo. Uncle Popo is here. Good. We are here together. 100% attention. Excellent. That 100% attention is what I want you to give me, give me in today's lesson. Our subject for today is social studies. In our last lesson, we talked about international conflict. And you were told that international conflict is a kind of dispute or disagreement between two or more countries. And we talked about causes and how it could be solved. 
Today we want to look at another topic. And um, before that, let me quickly tell you a very short story and, uh, and we'll lead that story to uh, today's topic. So many years ago, we had um, some group of people living and they have their own elders or people controlling their affairs, but we have different, um, can, can we say we have different villages close and then they were living together. So um, something just came up and there was a pandemic just like we have um, COVID now. So it happened like that and um, later they were thinking of they should have had organization or association that will look at their fear, their health issue. All of them like that. So they thought of it that they will work on that. Later, another thing happened that we had some people that wanted to visit the, the, those villages around and all of them cannot just represent and they thought of it that they should have association looking at the welfare of all the f villages around like that. They thought of having another association that will look into that affair. So we have different occasions like that that they now uh, they then agree that they should have association or organization that will look into different affairs of all the villages around them. That leads us to our uh, today's topic and that is international organization. International what? Organization. I know some of you are looking at it that last week we had international conflicts at uh, this time international organization. So what are the learning objectives? By the end of the lesson, you should be able to define international organizations at least examples of international organizations. Moving on to today's topic, what is international organization? An international organization is a union or association of people from different nations. An international organization is a union or association of people from different nations. Just like I said in that story, the villagers now decided to pick some people to represent them, to represent their affair. Just like as we now have it as international organization, union or association of people from different nations. So let's look at the, it is an organization that has two or more sovereign countries as members. It's an organization that has two or more sovereign countries as members. They have different dependent nations as members. This, this represents the flag of different nations. I think you can see the flag of... Um, it represents the flags of different nations. There are many international organizations depending on what they stand for. We have different international organizations, but depending on what they stand for, let's look at the organization one after the other. All these are the, the let me say, the logo or symbols of some international organization. We have the one for United Nations, the one for um, CRN, World Health Organization, World Economic Forum, and all that. So, some are regional. Um, when we say regional, that means it is for it um, only covers a, a particular geographical location. So that is when we say some are regional, that means it's not global. It's not that we have a members in the in the old world belonging to that association. Some are regional, just belong to particular geographical lo location. Just like example here, ECOWAS. That this is economic community of West African state. That means it's just for only West African countries that could be members of ECOWAS. We have an African Union, that means it is an association for just the, the countries in Africa continent. So that's why these are the examples of international organizations that are regional. So some are regional, like we have ECOWAS, we have African Union. Why some are global? Some are global, like um, we have, that means all the countries in the world could be part of the association or organization, just like World Bank, 
IMF, that's International Monetary Fund, UNO, United Nations Organization, all the examples of international organization association, which I look at them in details now. Nigeria belongs to many international organizations. Nigeria as a country belongs to many international organizations. So let's look at the examples of international organizations. The Commonwealth of Nations, say that. That's one of the examples, the Commonwealth of Nations. Um, these are countries that were colonized by Britain. They are countries that were colonized by Britain, and the Queen of England is the head of the Commonwealth. We know we have some countries that were colonized by Britain, so those countries are members of Commonwealth of Nations. Nigeria is one of them. So that is for Commonwealth, and the Queen of England is the head of the Commonwealth. Next one is the new Partnership for Africa's Development, NEPAD. Again, the new Partnership for Africa's Development, NEPAD. So let's look at what this is for. This is an economic organization that was founded in February 2010. It seeks to promote economic development among African countries. This is an organization promoting economic development among African countries. We can say this is the regional, you know, I told you some are regional, some are global. So that is NEPAD. It's only for the countries in Africa. Our next one is the African Union. Say that. And uh, the, uh, we have AU as the abbreviated letters. African Union is being represented with AU. That's African Union. Let's look at what it's all about. This was formerly known as the Organization of African Unity. Then it was known before to be OAU. That's Organization of African Unity. Before it was changed in July 2002. In what year? July 2002. It was changed from Organization of African Unity to African Union. It was founded in 1963. That means OAU was founded in 1963 by independent African countries. And what's the purpose? To ensure peace among member countries. And it has its headquarters at Addis Ababa. At where? Say Addis Ababa. Say it three times. Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa. Good. In Ethiopia. So it has its headquarters at Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. That's AU, African Union. What I want you to take home there is it was changed in July 2002 to AU, and AOAU was founded in 1963. It's headquartered at Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Next one is uh, the Economic Community of West African States. That's ECOWAS, the Economic Community of African States. You can see it in question like in this format out. What is the full meaning of ECOWAS? That's the Economic Community of West African States. That's ECOWAS. This is a regional economic association of West African countries, which was established in 1975. ECOWAS was established in what year? 1975. Its headquarters is in Abuja, Nigeria. That means we have the headquarters of ECOWAS in Nigeria, in Abuja here. And you are happy? Good. That means you are a great Nigerian. So it was established in 1975. That is ECOWAS. Next one is um, the United Nations Organization. That is UNO. United Nations Organization, that is UNO. It is the mother of all international organizations. It is the what? The mother of all international organizations. This is a world organization that comprises almost all independent nations of the world. Almost all independent nations of the world are member of UNO. It was founded in 1945. UNO was founded when? In 
45. It is headed by a secretary general. It is headed by who? By a secretary general. Don't forget, it was founded, UN was founded in 1945. It's headed by a secretary general. And almost all independent nations of the world are members. The following are some examples of specialized UN agencies. UNO, as I've just said now, has, has some specialized agencies. That means we have some agencies working on the UNO, United Nations Organization. So the first one here, specialized agencies of UNO. Let's look at WHO. What is the full meaning? That is World Earth Organization. Say that. World Earth Organization. It is a specialized, it is, sorry, it is specialized in finding solutions to earth problems of people in the world. It is specialized in finding solutions to earth problems of people in the world. Just like I told you in that story that they were looking, they had pandemic then, and they thought of having um, association organization that would look into their earth affair. That's what came about this WHO now. Like we are having COVID-19 now, I think WHO, that's what that organization is working seriously in making sure that they, they is in making sure that we have lasting solutions to it and making sure that people's heads are really their own concern. That's WHO. Next one is UNESCO. UNESCO, we call it UNESCO, the full meaning. United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, U UNESCO. United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. It attends to development of education, science, and culture in the world. UNESCO attends to development of education, science, and culture in the world as UNESCO is another agency of UNO. Another specialized agency is a UNICEF that's a United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. It is concerned with the welfare of children all over the world. The children, your friends, those of you that are watching me, all children UNICEF is concerned with the welfare of all of you. That is concerned with the welfare of children all over the world. That is UNICEF. Next one is WFF. Sorry, WFP. WFP, that's World Food Program. That's the full meaning. World Food Program. It is the UN agency for providing food aid to meet emergency needs and to support development of the people. That's World Food Program. That's another agency of UN providing food aid to meet emergency needs and to support development of the people. World Food Program. So that's another one. Other examples of international organizations are WTO, that's World Trade Organization, ILO, that's International Labor Organization, IMF, International Monetary Fund, and so on. We have different examples and many examples of um, UN specialized agencies and um, international organizations. In today's lesson, we, talk, we have successfully discussed international organization. And uh, you were told that international organization it's a union or association of people from different nations. Examples of international organizations include Commonwealth of Nations, NEPAD, AU, that's African Union, ECOWAS, Economic Community of West African States, UNO, and so on. Examples of specialized UN agencies, WHO, UNESCO, UNICEF, World Food Program, all these were also discussed in today's lesson. So, it's time to test and see if you are giving me your 100% attention in today's lesson. Questions. Question number one, define international organizations. Question number two, 
where is the headquarters of AU, that's African Union. You have just 25 seconds to attempt this. Your time starts now. Eyes on me. Uncle Popo is there. I believe you are still there. So now let's mark together. Question number one, define international organizations. An international organization is a union or association of people from different nations. Good. And number two, where is the headquarters of AU? Don't forget I asked you to call AU, I mean Addis Ababa, three times when I was teaching. So the headquarters of AU is in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. So two questions. If you got the two correctly, you deserve to be given a cheer. We have come to the end of today's lesson. Until next time, next lesson, Uncle Popo says, keep on studying. Bye. My wonderful pupils, we have come to the end of another beautifully packaged edition of The Classroom in Your Home. Beautifully packaged, interesting and exciting it has been for us. We've had fun and we hope that you have enjoyed yourselves too as we have brought new lessons in mathematics, English studies and of course general studies to you at home. Now we know that practice, 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 that is what makes a perfect person. And that is why we have structured online assessments for you to practice with during your leisure time. These online assessments can be accessed using the link bit.ly forward slash last web tests. The link again is bit.ly forward slash last web tests. Remember, these online assessments are our own way of knowing how well you are performing. So that we can help you to improve on your performance. Taking the online test is based on if you have access to either your daddy's, your mommy's, your uncle's or your auntie's Android or smartphones. If not, there's no problem. Just send your questions, your comments and your assignments to 081-50-86-5663. Please do not call that line. SMS and WhatsApp messages only. And when you're sending your assignments, make sure you indicate your name, your school, your class, and your local government education authority, LGEA. This is the only way through which you can be identified and rewarded accordingly. Beautifully packaged, exciting, interesting edition we had today just like the previous ones. The lesson starts today could be gotten on Lagos Suburb YouTube channel. You just need to subscribe to get notification when new videos are uploaded. The classroom in your home could be watched live on Facebook, the same time airing on television through the page showing on the screen. Until our next edition where we shall meet again on The Classroom in Your Home, make sure you do your homework. Wash your hands regularly. Keep studying hard, but above all, Stay, Stay safe, safe, because at last of it, we, we leave, leave no child, child behind. behind.